Hi, this is Jocelyn Alice, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. The first thing I want to talk to you about is why Clef John. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so like Let's I'm- talk about that fangirl moment. I'm at the Shazam office at South By, and I walk in and I was like saying my hellos to everybody. Then I look over and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> That is Wack Up John and I was freaking out and I just like kind of stood in the corner and like stared at the wall for a while and, and my Shazam girl Deb, she was like, come on, go say hi. I was like, oh no, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> so she introduced me to him, forced me to talk to him. I was so nervous. And then he like listened to my whole song and had all this dope feedback and he was really lovely. That's so cool. What, what yeah. was one thing that you did pick up from him uh, with all the feedback? Um, you know, he, he, he mostly talked about the way the music felt mm -hmm. and, and I always really admire, especially musicians that are technical people right. when they go back to the feeling and, and the mood and, and what it, um, what it brings up in people. It's kind of the reason that I make music, you right. know? So it, yeah, it meant a lot to me. So you guys, you guys are in the same place then? Oh yeah. We're like, same we're homies. Time. We talk every day. <laughs> like, hey, he's I'll, actually, I'll you guys, later, I'm busy. Right. He's, he's actually right there watching <laughs> <Yeah>. this interview. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're really good. I try. I try. <laughs> Anyways, you, you recently signed to Disruptor Records, which is a label that I really enjoy because it's small enough. It, it's a small label with big acts. Yeah. Um, and I feel like these acts get the proper attention that they deserve. Um, I feel like Adam does an amazing job with that. Yeah, he really does. It's cool. So many people have been asking me, so you signed to a major, like, you know, are they talking to you? Do you have a say? Are you feeling like, you know, you're getting enough attention from them? And and it's so the opposite of Disruptor. I feel like it's like a, a little family. I can literally text him and he's back to me within like right. 30 seconds, you know? And like, I was really nervous to sign. I've been independent for my whole career. And, you know, you've heard so, like so many stories from artists, mm. like, you know, I wasn't um, respected creatively or I didn't, my t I didn't like my team. I didn't like to talk to them or... Right chill with them like I love my team I'm very 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 lucky and what is it about or, or how did this signing even come about because like you mentioned you've, you've been doing the music for quite some time yeah um, I was really lucky my song kind of took off in Canada on radio there and I had all these labels calling me and I really took my time and, and tried to make the best decision that I could and mm. Um, I didn't make that decision based on anything but the gut feeling I had when I was talking to them. I didn't care about their rosters. I didn't right. care about their resumes. I just wanted it to feel right. And looking back, I'm like, man, I made this decision in the best way because everything's kind of like it feels organic and real and, and natural and it's exciting. Now from going, from going from hustling for quite some time to now having an actual backing, <laughs> what, what is that experience like? Oh, dude, it's so <laughs> different. Like I spent the last year in Canada traveling like across the country, couch surfing, found a way to fly for free, yeah. was like begging people for airport rides, like literally had no money and Did found my way across the country. Like it was so hard up. And now I have like a radio team and I have like a publicist that's sitting here and um, you know, my band travels. Why Clef that's right yeah, there. And why? I mean, he follows me everywhere. Like Personal it's, assistant. It's, it's crazy. Amazing. Yeah, he's the best. I mean, he just got me my coffee this morning. Perfect. Why? That was actually a great coffee. I, I really enjoyed it. I took a little sip. Good job. <laughs> yeah, literally every aspect of my life is different. And it's I'm really grateful that I've booked tours on my own now because mm -hmm. I will never take that for granted. I know how much work goes into that right. and how many people it, it's it's amazing to me to have done it alone and now have a team is like, oh, finally. I'm so I, think, lucky. I think the the best part is that not only that you have a team booking the tours, but you have a, a publicity team I think that's that's something that if you don't set something up like that during a tour there's no point of that tour I'm learning that yeah and for such a long time I I just created my own hype and it didn't work all of the time you yeah. know and it was it's a lot of energy to put in and it's nice to have people that are really passionate about that side do that job right. so that I can just like be a songwriter and an artist and yeah you hit the jackpot. I really did. I'm so lucky. And now that song's doing great here in the States. It's finally out here in the States. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about that video. Let's talk about your acting, your <laughs> acting chops. <laughs> I thought I was watching some like mafia uh, really? introduction to a mafia film going on. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> I was super nervous. It was like two days um, filming with this huge crew. I've never done a video before. Um, and 
it came out really cool. It was yeah. definitely not, I think, what people were expecting, which was kind of what I was going for. But I want to go back to those two days. Like when it ended, we were doing like 16 hour days and it would end and I'd be like, I don't want to go home. I just want to stay on set. Like I loved it. All the treatments that I was sent were like, she's at a poker table and she's gambling. Right. And I was like, no man, like the song is not about poker. You know, it's about love and it's about right. struggle and perseverance. And, you know, poker is just the metaphor for all of that. And so when Mark, um, the director, he sent me the treatment where it was like this heist film and all these criminals and had nothing to do with that. I was like, dude. We're doing this. This is happening. Going into jackpot, like we, like you mentioned earlier, it did really it did gold in Canada. Yeah. So, moving on to a second song or even an album, how do you really? I'm sure that's that's a lot of pressure, knowing that your first track was like certified gold. Yeah, I didn't think there was a whole lot of pressure until I went on that Canadian radio tour, and every single host was like what's your next single are you nervous that it's like not gonna follow it up and I was like well now I am jeez man <laughs> but I just believe in work ethic and mm -hmm. I believe in belief in yourself I think that's the hardest part about being an artist is to continually find that strength within yourself to know that you're capable and you're worthy and you deserve it and um, I just decided to work and just write with every producer I could get my hands on yeah. in, in Canada and now finding producers in America and um, I think my EP, it kind of shows that and it shows that I was willing to hopefully stretch myself and at the same time know who I was. And I'm, I'm 30 years old. I have some things figured out now that I didn't before. So I'm feeling really ready. And going into the studio, because you have lots of energy. <laughs> you have a ton of energy. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, is just the, this is just a portion of like <laughs> what it really is. She's, she's calm and collected right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but you go into the studio and I mean, I'm sure there's deadlines on certain songs and or recording sessions, especially if you're if you're there by the hour. So how do you go into the studio and focus on work? How does that really happen for you? Well, it's funny because I don't normally work in studios. I'm working in like home studios of producers that I work with generally. Um, exclusive yeah Jeez. which means like there's no time constraints right but i'm also i'm not like a, a long stretch of time kind of person like mm -hmm. i like to like go and do my job and get out right. you know I, I like to like be prepared and and work beforehand so that when i'm in the studio it's like i kind of know what i'm doing um but with that being said like yeah there are moments where it feels like okay you know i've, I've written at uh, the sony publishing offices in toronto mm -hmm. and it's like you have six hours and if you don't write and finish recording that song in six hours, like I'm not going to be back in Toronto for two months. Like I've, I've got to finish this. Jeez. But I kind of like that pressure. This whole industry is a lot of pressure and I, right. I really feed off of that. And how do you really work your, your music out? How do you how do you write? I know every artist is different. Um, usually for me, it's just kind of a mumbling and I just start like kind of making sounds and hopefully they turn into words eventually. And I don't worry about lyrics until melody is nailed because mm -hmm. I believe melody is the most important thing. And it's funny, I wrote with this guy um, who writes a lot in Nashville and he does a lot of country stuff. And he was like, okay, so like before we did anything, like what's the song called? Like, what do you want to, you want to start with the title? And I was like, N no, I've never in my that's, life started with a sound, title. That sounds really tough. That's like, that's how country music is written apparently. They start with the title and then they go from there. And to me, that's so backwards. Like, I don't even know what the song is about until I'm finished writing the lyrics, you yeah. know? Sometimes I'm like still figuring it out and then it still like, mumbles. Then, it's exactly. still mumbling going on. Exactly, yeah. Um, huh. But yeah, for me, songwriting has to be really organic and really free. And I worked with these guys in Toronto, the Kuya brothers. Uh, they did that Alessia Cara song here. Yeah. And they, that was a really interesting process because they were like, do you want to just like get in the booth and like start singing some things? And I was like... Okay, <laughs> I was so nervous, you know, because I am like I like to prepare like right. to know exactly what I'm doing Otherwise going you'd be a rapper, right? Exactly. I mean, I do rhyme like I do have sick flow, but like that'll be on the next album I think she's putting herself on the spot <laughs> <laughs> I do this song. Um, I just want to love you by Jay-Z, you know, that one. I'm yeah. a hustler, baby <laughs> The flow is pretty sick, but anyways, yeah. that's another yeah. interview. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god <laughs> This is what you started <laughs> <laughs> you should YouTube this song called Up So High. That was my very first rap I ever wrote. It's really embarrassing. Okay, I'm going to look that up. It's so embarrassing. I'm going to look that up. So going back to this debut EP, what, what can we expect as far as uh, is every song, does every song coincide? Are we going to get a little mixture of everything? What's it going to sound like? Um, I'm a mood swinger. 
I'm a very up and down person. Mm -hmm. I like extremes. So there's a lot of like low tempo ballads, um, heartfelt kind of struggles. And then there's some up tempo kind of empowering and lifting um, stuff. And it's funny because I was like feeling like, okay, jackpot's done really well. I should probably follow it up with a few jackpots, right. you know, even though I hate writing the same song twice. Like that just sounds like death to me. And I called up Adam thinking like I'd sent him a bunch of demos thinking he was going to be like angry with me because I wasn't happy with what I was writing right. at that time, feeling that pressure, right? And he was like, you know, how are you feeling in the studio right now? And I was like, oh, shit, I feel terrified. I feel <laughs> all the bad things, you know? And he was like, well, yeah, I'm hearing that in the music and like, just do you, like whatever that is, you know, let go of the song and like, just do you. And that's kind of when the ballad started coming. And I, I am a bit of a dark person. I know mm -hmm. that I seem... Um, generally pretty joyful but there's another side of me that's very quiet and I wouldn't expect that. yeah like I'm super extreme that way I can be like I can be really shy and kind of just struggle in that way and that's where my writing is is this amazing place where I can just be quiet and um, really introspective and really think about what I'm going through because right. I'm sensitive and I feel a lot in a day right. um, so yeah I hope it's like a ride you know I hope it's not just like one thing that yeah. sounds terribly boring to me <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm actually curious to ask you, because uh, you were in a group before. Yeah. So what made you want to go solo? Um, my bandmate, Lisa, she still travels with me. She's my music director, and she's awesome. Um, and we were in a band together. And I landed this Target commercial that was, like, nationwide, <laughs> which was, like, amazing. It, like, started my career as a solo artist, except I wasn't trying to go solo at right. that time, you know? And she actually called me up while I was traveling, and she was like, I think you need to leave our band. We need to break up. Yeah. And I was like, what? How Damn. dare ye tell me to leave my own band? I was so mad. And then like a few weeks went by and I was like, no, she's totally right. Like I have to go solo. And it's funny because people have always wanted me to go solo. Like even mm -hmm. when I was in bands before her, they would kind of always see it as the front person and, and want that for me. Yeah. And I just, I always kind of wanted to hide behind my people a little bit. I think that's the shy side of me. But now it's, it's time to like step out and, and do me. And yeah. It's exciting to finally have the vision be completely my own. Now, it's cool that Lisa's still with you. Yeah. I'm so lucky. Right. Because we've been working together for like five years or something. We've seen all parts of each other, you know? So it's like, we know how to travel together. And we know how to play together. We know how to be friends. We know how to leave each other alone. All those things that are really important when you're on the road. So I've, I've seen performances of you, mainly radio performances that okay. you've done. So it's just you and, and, and Lisa. Yeah. Is that what we could expect when you go on tour or do you have a full backing band uh, during your tour dates? I would be down to tour with just Lisa. Um, that's how our band was before. It was just a little duo, very yeah. acoustic. Um, but I would like to do full band. I also have a keys player and a drummer in Canada and they fly out like for gigs here and there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to do the full band thing. Now with, sure. with the debut EP, any plans on, on a release on that yet? Uh, next few months. It's like in the mixing process now. So I got my first song yesterday that was mixed. Ooh, it's nice. like, ah! Yeah, it's really exciting. First as in the first new song that we're going to listen to or first song from the first EP? First song from the EP. I don't know what the next single is yet, dude. I think it's going to be tough. Everyone's asking and Adam's like, you know, let's just put out the EP and let the public decide their favorite. Yeah. It's like, oh, thank God, because I can't choose. They're like little babies to me. Well, Jackpot seems like a song that could still just go strong for a little longer. Yeah, he was saying like six or seven months of life. Yikes. So like that's, that's crazy because it really, it was alive on the charts in Canada for about six months. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's pretty wild, that little song. Is it weird that you're so big in Canada and then you come to the States and it's like you're starting over again? Yeah, I walk into rooms and like no one gasps and like tries to take photos and I'm like, hello, I'm here. After you hired all the security and nobody shows <laughs> yeah, up. exactly. <laughs> like, why is like, you know, holding everybody back? You're the best, why? Um, honestly, like my song's big on radio in Canada, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I'm like walking around and getting noticed a whole lot. Right. That'll happen once in a while. It's, it's, yeah, it's not very different. Are you all. ready for that life though? Um, there are parts of me that don't want anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, fame does not entice me whatsoever. Fame is just like a byproduct of what I have to do in order to yeah. share my message. So I'll put up with it. I don't enjoy that. Well, it's, it's not too late hard. to be like Sia and just cover your face. Yeah, I, dude, I, how much do you admire her for that's that? Amazing. Like when she went on the Ellen show yeah, and like turned insane. her back, I was like, this girl's balls. Like, I love like, her. I don't think I could ever pull that off. Like, I would hate all that limelight, but I don't think I could ever like turn my back. I know. Well, I think if you're doing something with the attention you're receiving, 
then it's a good thing, yeah. you know? And I feel like if, if the attention kind of takes you over and that becomes the focus of what you're doing, that's where it scares me, yeah. for sure. Now, next few months for possibly the debut EP, what else can we expect from uh, Miss Jocelyn Alice? Uh, just a lot of radio stuff in America, a few gigs in Canada here and there, and then just like a bunch of writing. But you can follow me on Instagram or whatever and know my entire life.